Welcome to the City of Hope Greater St. Mary Church, a historic congregation situated in Bedford-Stuyvesant Heights in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you for joining us today in our morning worship. It is hoped that the word, worship, and the time of prayer will be a blessing to you and your family. Let's go to church. Come on, just lift your hands if you believe in it. Oh, he's able, God, he's able to do just what he said he would do. Yes, Lord. And he's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Yes, Lord. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, oh, oh. He's able. Is able to do just what he said he would do. Yes, Lord. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Oh, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Cause he's able, oh, 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 he's able. Why don't you lift your voice and say, oh, yeah, oh, oh, he's able. Yes, he is, say, oh, oh. Say, oh, 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 he's able. One more time. Oh, oh, yes, Lord. We believe you, Jesus. We trust in your word. We know you're able. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Cause he won't give up on you. Lift your voice and say, don't give up, don't give up. Yeah, be encouraged, he won't give up on you. One more time, don't give up on God. No, he won't give up on you. Keep it right there. Don't give up on God. Just get it in your spirit. He'll never give up on you. Yes, Lord. He won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Yes, God. You'll never give up on us. That 
that's why we trust you. That's why we believe every word. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. He won't give up on you. One more time. Don't give up on your God. Your God. Your God. Your God. He won't give up on you because he's able. The meditation today is taken from Nahum, Nahum 1 and 7. The New King James Version will be before you, so follow along with the monitor. And here begins the reading of God's word. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. The New International Version, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. Right. He cares for those who trust in him. The word of the Lord. Some years ago in the late 70s, I attended the annual prayer day at Pilgrim. It was then located on Central and Schaefer Avenue, and I was living in a moment during that time that was neither good, n not a good one, or an easy one. I was exhausted, frustrated, worn out, and ready to disappear. And not everyone can understand or relate to those moments, but this was mine. Several speakers were scheduled for the day, but my turn came as Pastor Rosie Wallace Brown came to the pulpit. She began with, the Lord is indeed in this place, and he is here to do what you need him to. She began to tell of how her mother would sing when she was working her way through something. She said her mother would sing the text in Nahum. I cannot remember the melody, but I remember all so well this verse. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows them that trust him. She sang this until the house was a wreck. The verse, that verse, that song on that day brought me from my broken place back towards the light. He knows them that trust him. He knows them that trust him. And that is what I would like to use as a meditation focus today. Trust him. He knows you. This week, I felt myself being drawn to that dark place again. That place and space of wanting to walk off and not come back. Not everyone can relate to these moments. If you have been there, you know what I mean. If you haven't, keep living. It's plugged into the journey. I received this verse in a text message with a note. This is the verse for today. The Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows them that trust him. I could feel myself being drawn towards the light. There is a challenge with this verse in that it has in it oxymorons. You see there, don't you? The Lord is good and then the day of trouble. These two don't go together. Good and trouble in the same day, in the same hour, in the same space, in the same place. How can this be, the Lord being good and then having a day of trouble? Perhaps we can agree that life is pretty much this reality. God being good and having to deal with trouble. You know, once upon a time, the greeting among believers and almost anyone from anywhere at any time was, God is good. And the response was, all the time. And then it was reversed. And all the time, God is good. 
good. Yeah, God is good. Do you remember this? I'm sure you do. Have you ever heard this? It's a day of trouble. God is good. Did you ever hear it in reverse? God is good. It's a day of trouble. Not likely. What is, what is thought that supports God being good? It is that we have everything that we need and want. There's no sickness, despair, no sorrow, no sadness, no loss, no pain, or disappointments that causes us to believe that God is good. Can that be? I can only think of Job's response to his wife in their day of trouble. Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Lord, help me. There is that contradiction in statements again. Good and evil from the hand of God. My brothers and sisters, God works in contradictions. He works in oxymorons, in negatives and positives at the same time. God as only he can, works with evil and good and reveals his purpose in us and for us. Here's another contradiction. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. Few people see themselves as strong in trouble. Most of us have been told by those who are watching us get through, I'll go through, you're strong. You didn't let that break you. I don't know where your strength comes from, but you are the comeback kid. Somewhere in your mind, you can see every spot, stop, place, and position where you were sure you were going to lose it. Walking in the darkness with no possibility of a rescue, have you been there? If you have, you know what I mean. If you haven't, keep living. It's plugged into the journey. Further in the verse, there is this ray and blast of hope. It's what encourages me and I hope will encourage you. It's here where both positives and negatives come together and enables us to see God as, as not one-dimensional, but as a whole, it's here we see God and the manage, as the manager and superintendent of everything that happens to us, with us, around us, and in us. The Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. Here it is. He knows them that trust him. God knows you because you trust him. Help me, Jesus. How well do most of us think, how most of us think we know people in our lives, especially when things are going good, going well. We really think we know them. When things are smooth sailing, living the good life, we convince ourselves, we know them, I know them, I know them. They would never do this, they would never do that, they would never do such and such. How many of y'all got children, special children, wonderful children, delightful children? Children like nobody else's children. How many of you got nieces and nephews like nobody else's nieces and nephews? And they're just wonderful. They're just the most darling, wonderful. Folks. Well, you know what my mother used to say? If you told me that such and such a one, and that would be one of her children, did such and such and such a thing, I'd believe you. Now, y'all try to figure out what such and such is. You got your own such and such. There you go. But if you told me that this other one did such and such and such and such and such, I'd have to think about it. Because you know they say all parents know their children. You know which one is looking straight at you and telling you the truth, and you know which one is looking straight at you, straight past you, and lying. One of my brother's girlfriends told my mother, you don't know him like I know him. She says, I only got nine months on you. <laughs> How 
often do we really think we know folk, especially when life and living is easy? If you have lived, if you have lived longer than a minute, more than an hour, longer than a day, and longer than a few months, and a whole lot of years, then you know trouble introduces you to the true colors of those you think you know. Trouble tells us what we are made of. Trouble reveals what's what's the, what those we who, what reveals who we believe we know are actually made of. What is really in them? Now let me be a little churchy here. Uh, it's not until you go in, go through, and come out that you really know how good God is. David said, and I'm nearly done. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The streams had gone over our head. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped like a bird out of a snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Your help and my help is in that God knows you because you trust him. The weakest faith, the weakest trust, give, gives God all the power he needs to turn circumstances around in your favor. <laughs> You said, you know, sometimes I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I don't feel it. I don't understand it. And you shake my head. You shake your head. I shake my head. You shake your head. We shake them all together and say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do this. That's a great statement. Because you know the Lord has to do it. You know the Lord has to do it. You know the Lord has to do it. The day of trouble can rattle and shake you to the core. It can cause you to doubt, to fear, and to give up in frustration. Trouble can make life appear not to be worth living. The day of trouble can come with a cloud, a fog, a mist, so thick you can't see the way in front of you, nor behind you, nor around you. Even in your darkest moment, God sees you, knows you, and is guiding you even in the dark. How many times... Have others walked where you walked and stood where you stood and passed where you passed and didn't make it? Why is it you made it? It's because you trusted God where you couldn't trace him. You've seen the times when the wicked fell once and didn't get up again. And you fell seven times and probably 70 times 70. And God keeps picking you up over and over and over again, just because you trust him. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. Let me just say this last example, and I'm near the end of this. Have any of you ever fell and got up before anybody turned around and saw you on the floor? They heard the thump, and you was pulling yourself together so you could turn around with them. What happened? What happened? You heard it? Yeah, who was it? <laughs> you just didn't want anybody to see you laying on the floor, especially in your good rag, I mean your good clothes. You know, you, you, was, you was all sharp, the heels was too high, or the shoes was too new, and somehow or another you went down, and sometimes you go down on the wrong knee, the bad knee, the knee that you don't want to be on, and you tell it, get up, turn around and act like nothing has happened. This is a moment for you to get happy. How many times have you fallen, made a mistake, messed up bigly and royally, and before anybody could know that you were down, God got you up. And when folks were asking what happened, you pulled yourself together like nothing. You and God know this was a big thump, but you got me up before anybody could see me stretched out, laid out. That's a good spot. That's a good spot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm closing. You need to be real happy that not all your mistakes had to be lived out loud. Right. Oh, my soul. You need to be happy 
that all your fumbles and your foibles didn't have to be lived out loud. You need to be happy. You need to be grateful. You need to be thankful that all your mess ups, God didn't expose you before everybody. You had to walk through here today, ringing the bell, announcing your sins. For a lot of us, there wouldn't be enough time to tell everything that we did, and where we've been, who we were with, and what we thought, and what we said, and how we looked, and how we acted. But his blood covers a multitude of faults. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. My, 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 my. So when you come to church, you can't be distracted by distracting and distracted people. Change your seat. Get in the place. And worship the Lord with everything that's in you. Because God covered you one more time. God shielded you one more time. He hid your mistakes one more time. He hid your soul in the cleft of the rock one more time. Lastly, I have come to understand on my worst day, in my worst moment, in my darkest hour, God is good. I have learned in my worst moment, in my darkest hour, that winners don't quit and quitters don't win. Help me, Jesus. I want to encourage you here today, as well as me talking to myself, who may have Give up on your schedule. You may have give up on your mind and in your plans. Perhaps you have set a date and a time, the when, the where, you plan to walk away and just disappear. Yeah. Maybe you have been working on your give up plan and speech for a while, trying to shape it up, dress it up, and work it up. They just got one more, another. And again. Maybe you have resigned to resign from life and living. I want you to know that on your worst day, in your worst hour, and your darkest moment, God is good. You can't change that. I can't change that. The White House, the Black House, the Blue House, the Green House, the Pot House. Your house, my house, can't change that God is good. And with all the crazy people in power, out of power, God still is God. No one and nothing can or will ever change that. Know this. You will, that you really won't, know how bad things are until you get out. My soul has escaped from the father's net. You really didn't know how complicated and intricate and how tangled the father's net was until you got out of it, looked at it, and wondered how could I ever have gotten out of that trap. It was God who made the way of escape. And when you look back, you know it was God that kept you. Anybody here ever have a moment of reflection? I don't, I don't mean bad reflection, and maybe it is a bad one. You need to go back there, be bad, and then turn around. Change the narrative. This is the thing that should have killed me. But instead of killing, killing me, it gave me power. This is the thing that should have taken me out. But it became the impetus where God propelled me. This problem gave me power. This problem gave me power. 
I'm getting ready to close. You don't believe me, but watch me. So you better hurry up and preach in your role. Tell them your problem gave you power. Go preach the other way and tell them folk your problem gave you power. Tell somebody else your problem gave you power. You yourself have to shake your own head at your own self. And say, Lord have mercy, it had to be you. It had to be you. How many times do you think you should have been in a powder, padded room with the door locked? Oh, Jesus. Have mercy, God. Sitting in a corner, sucking your thumb, curling your hair, bouncing off the wall. But just as you was getting ready to go into the padded room, God sent peace past your understanding and took you through a place where most people would have been caught and killed. So my brothers and sisters, go through so you can come out. Yes, you and I are not exempted from trouble. You and I are not exempted from trouble. Trouble has been plugged into your journey. You can't escape it, you can't avoid it, nor are you exempt from it. Trouble is the process which makes you better and don't let it make you bitter. There will be those moments which when, when you reflect upon, it looks like you missed God, didn't hear God, or ignored God. You cannot live in regret in that if I had just heard God, I wouldn't be dealing with what I'm dealing with right now. You cannot unscramble eggs. Now y'all trying to make me work, but I'm trying to tell you how to finish this. Right. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Do you really? I had someone to ask me one time in the group, why can't you unscramble the eggs? And I said, well, listen. You here, let me get you some eggs. I'll scramble them and then you just show us how you get them eggs back in the shell in their original form. And once you do it, I'll believe it. But I've been around here a little longer than you and I've seen more eggs scrambled perhaps than you have and I didn't eat them all, I just watched them. There's nothing more beautiful than watching a chef make a big deal out of a bunch of eggs. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you gonna spill them eggs, but they know what they're doing. You know, listen. Yeah. Scramble eggs, crack the eggs, put them in a the bowl, get a fork. Yeah. You don't even need a whisk. Just, you know. Yeah. They ease, hold them in the pan, hold them over, right. push them this way, push them back that way, turn them around that way, <laughs> you know. And for folk, who like their eggs fully cooked and done. And someone very close to me says, I don't know why they ever order eggs from the because they don't ever cook like you. Nobody cooks like you cook. Why you expect that? Make them hard. And I will say to the waiter or the waitress, ask them please to brown them and make them if it's a young and they'll say, oh, that's what hard means. For the rest of us, sophisticated, for like a little bit of a run. Now, did I say anything about your hard eggs? <laughs> did I say anything about your brown eggs? What you ooh about me and my runny eggs? That ain't right. You ain't good. Sometimes I like them sunny side up. With the yolk looking right at me. Stop it. Stop it. It ain't your eggs, it's mine. I know. You ain't got to eat them, it's mine. I get out your way when you eat your bananas. Get right out your way. 
Yeah, about kill me. <laughs> like them to have a little bit of good, you know, a, a give. And so when you put them on toast, they just pop. Right? And then you can really do it up if you just put a little onions. Some green peppers. But now, once you do that, you can't undo it. Whether you like them hard or running, screaming and howling, you can't undo that. And here's what I'm saying to you with all my egg examples and illustrations. What's done is done. And you don't need to be walking around, I wish I would listen to God, I wish I would listen. Well, you hear him now, don't you? It's done. And here's what he's saying to you. My grace is sufficient for you. So stop trying to go backwards. Assert yourself in going forward and maybe God will send you a rescue, a rescue real quick. But the longer you stay bitter, the longer you stay angry and upset, the longer it will take you to get out of it. Because God does not do social promotion. Because somebody just needs to get in your seat. You don't get out until you get the lesson. Come on, somebody. A quick learner mm -hmm. can move on quickly. Yeah. A slow learner keeps getting taught right. until they, and yeah. sometimes the teacher gives the same exact test that you gave the last time, yeah. trying to help you to get out of it. Right. And you still keep fumbling at the same question. You keep studying what you know instead of studying what you don't know. Right. School people are the same. You cannot undo what's done. My last statement to you, and here's the thing that I have been holding on for my own, my own benefit. Don't go back to the place that broke you. Keep walking towards the light. Don't go back to the place that broke you. Keep walking towards the light. And for many, it's not only a place, but it's a person. Don't go back to the person that broke you. Keep walking towards the light. What you can do and what you do is know that the grace of God is more than sufficient to get you through. He's a strong hope in the day of trouble. If you trust God, he'll see you through. He knows them that trust him. Little old church here for just a moment. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love, abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. A hundred years ago, when they used to call for Brother Chambers to sing solos, I'd have to sing my own song and play it too. And one of the easy ones for me was, why should I feel discouraged? I feel a crying coming. Why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart be discouraged? Feel lonely and long for a heavenly home. When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. Even when I'm not talking to him, he's still my friend. His eyes are on the sparrow. 
and I know he watches me. Now listen to this. I sing not because I feel like it, but because I can. I sing because I'm happy. And happy is not relative. It's a state of being. You understand what I'm saying? Was it Bob Marley? Bob, 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 Bob. Marley said, don't worry. He didn't say feel happy. What he said? You know you know that. It ain't even in the Bible. You know it. Don't worry. Be happy. I sing because I be happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. His eyes are on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes are on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes are on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. We used to sing, he's real, he's real. I know, I know he's real. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's real. On a Sunday night, Elder Odessa King would sit in the corner on Fulton Street, and she'd get happy. She, she was a real Southern So sometimes the Sunday afternoon dinner would still be on her, and she'd come out of high wheels. What's next? Yeah. You know, the old folks didn't know all those terms about praise, but they knew if they opened their mouth, if they said, and yeah. 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 If they opened their mouth, if they sang and moved, God would move. Yeah. We've gotten so whatever it is that we've gotten to that we if we sing, we don't move, and if we don't move, we don't sing, we don't clap our hands. We sit in church like we don't know what's happening. You ride five, five miles, 10 miles, 11 miles, 12 miles, knowing where you're going, and when you get there, you look surprised. You came to engage in worship. And sometimes you need to move before anybody else So the devil don't catch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then around nine o'clock Sunday night, when we thought we'd start rolling in, a whole new jump would stop, start, and somebody would come from the other corner. I believe I'll testify while I have this chance, because I may not have this chance anymore. Testimonies, the testimonies wasn't a narrative of trouble, but they were praise reports. Yeah. Beloveds, I was going to the doctor and they kept looking and kept looking and didn't, couldn't, didn't know what they was looking for, but there was something the matter with me and, and somebody laid their hands on me and cast the devil and sickness out. And I'm here to tell you when I went back to the doctor, what they were looking for, they could not find. I believe I'll testify. Why don't you ask somebody in your row, you got anything to tell? You talking to them like you're scared. 
Go back and ask them again. You got anything to tell? Yeah, do it another way. Go behind you. You got a praise report? Yeah, ask somebody else. You got a praise report? Near to Monday morning. Come over here to stay, Lord, till I die. Come over here to stay, Lord. Come over here to stay, Lord. Yeah, oh, Lord. Oh, I come over here to stay, Lord. Oh, I come over here to stay, Lord. Yeah, I come over here to stay, Lord. Don't lose your trust. All across the building, would you stand with me, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for this day and all that the day will afford us. Had it not been for you, we would have seen no day at all. You kept us from evil. You kept evil from us. And then you kept us from ourselves. For that, we thank you. And now, God, we thank you for hope. We thank you for peace. We thank you for joy. And we thank you for the will to trust you no matter what. We'll follow you no matter what. We'll hold on to you no matter what. Because, Lord, you are good. You're a stronghold in the day of trouble. And you know us because we trust you. Thank you for healed bodies. Thank you for healed minds. Thank you for healed spirits. Thank you for healed souls. And thank you for healed lives. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands. Everybody. Thank you for joining us today. If you wish to be a blessing to this ministry, you may do so by following the directions on your screen. We thank you for your generous giving. May the Lord bless you.